Live from Dick South 2018 is Perfect Day Podcast. I am Koki Barini, your Perfect Day Engineer, and I am here with Richard Davis of Trademark Properties. You know, perfect days, we always get the question, you know, are perfect days perfect? And you know what? In a world filled with fear and scarcity and just perfectionism everywhere, I'm here to tell you that perfect days are far from being perfect, but they're yours for the taking. So again, I'm Koki Barini here with Perfect Day and Richard Davis. Richard, thanks so much for being here. Koki, thanks for having me. I'm always a big fan of your career, so I was, I was very... I was really touched that you called me. Of all the people you could have sitting here right now, Richard Davis from small town James Island, South Carolina. I just feel... Do you know my people are from James Island? I do. Yes, I do. my people are from James Island. We're you know, both from the same neck of the woods. That's right. That's right. And when your, last, your maiden last name is Coker, you know, I often get the question of, oh, are you from Hartsville? Are you the Hartsville Cokers? Yes, yes. And I say, no, nope, my people are from James Island. James Island. <laughs> so I love that story with you. Um, and thank you so much. And I love that you began in gratitude because that is so much of um, the heart of Perfect Day and what we're doing here. Because let me tell you something. First and foremost, I know how busy you are. And um, the reason why I wanted to have you on the show overwhelms me because I'm really excited to talk about, I got to say the word, but um, I know the four-letter word is, is not a good word Do with you. Do not say a dirty word don't, on air. Don't say the dirty word. Go ahead. Go ahead. Say okay. it once. And you know what? It's actually a dirty word with me, too. Yes. Yes. I, I, I think with America, it has. It, it's, it was a love fest, right? And... Well, let's now tell them what we're talking. What's, what's the dirty four-letter word? The four-letter four word. So, so as you know, I, in my past life, I, had, um, I created a TV show called Flip This House. Yes. And I used to get emails from all around the country of people saying, oh, I love your show, but please, please stop with a potty mouth. And, you know, they would bleep it out, and I'd say, you know, it, if you look at the rough cut, I would say something very dramatically, yeah. and they'd hit a beep. I'm like, I didn't cuss. <laughs> but but uh, bleeps equals rating. So... So in my office now, you can say any word you want except the four-letter word, mall. I mean, M A L L. M A L L. That's where the cuss jar fills up daily. Yeah. So yeah. this is my gratitude jar, nice. not the cuss jar, nice. but this is my gratitude jar. We began in gratitude because yeah. I am so thankful you're here. But you Love know what? It. I'm telling you, mall is a dirty le- four-letter word for yes, me. It is. I'm yes, not, it is. I'm not. I'm not a huge, not a big shopper. Yep. Yep. And um, I think what's so awesome and interesting about your story is a few things. And I, I, I know we're going to talk about so much here today, but the idea of bricks and mortar sort of yes. going away. Yes. And so I'm assuming that's a piece of the four letter word besides the fact that I'm assuming it's really become a home away from home for you. Yes, it really has. With the project. Yes. So, uh, you know, let's tell everyone what you're here for. Like, yeah. I really want to talk about the awesome things that you haven't planned for Citadel Mall yes, here yes. in Charleston. Yeah, so um, so in 2010, first of all, you played sports, right? Your kids yes. played sports. Yes. And so the world has evolved and people kind of forget. But, you know, back in the day, it used to be you wanted everyone to stay active, right? That was the reason to stay active. So even if we you We needed more now than ever. Yeah, right? So even if you weren't a sports fan, they wanted you so the... Remember the President's Commission would come to school and give us awards for doing President's push-ups and sit-ups and Absolutely. jumping jacks. Have you heard the word jumping jacks since or 1975? How about this one? Flexed arm hang. Yes, there you go, I right? think I, I still hold the record at my, at my elementary school mm, nice. for the flexed arm nice, hang. Nice, nice. So, so back then, think about it. You know, so they tried to get us to exercise at school, and then, uh, and then you had different levels. So then you, you, would, you would have your church league, and you would have your rec center. Or like where you and I grew up, the James Island YMCA, right? And so, and, um, and then you would work your way up. And if you were so fortunate enough, you really didn't ha- have any middle school, elementary school teams necessarily, uh, much to speak of. But you get to high school. And so you spend your whole life trying to make a high school team, whatever sport that I'm happens to be. I'm getting ready to go down that rabbit hole with right? my oldest. Right? Yes. Well, here's yeah. where, here's where, um, here's where some of my best friends in the world do not like what I'm about to say, but high school sports is almost irrelevant. Okay, it's almost irrelevant. Wow. It, and it's sad to say. Now it's not That's irrelevant. That's going to be a soundbite. Yeah, it is. That's... Well, and 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 so for people like me and you, it's not irrelevant for the social setting, right? Friday night lights, 
uh, that's never going to go away. You know, teams in Texas spending $60 million for a high school stadium, that, that obviously is important. But, 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 but here's what has changed. When your children try to compete at the highest level, uh, as you know, my, my middle son plays basketball for Clemson. He just... Now, this is a story. Yeah. To paint the picture for the listener, how, how tall, I mean, how so, tall is your son? So my son is, um, he's listed at 5'11 in a nice pair of Nikes, right? I mean... Right? And so I think his shortest teammate besides him is 6'5". And, and so he plays for Clemson, ACC, basketball. That was his dream. And, and so it was something that he absolutely put out there. It sounded crazy. And the one thing, if I have any gift, is like, I'm going to convince you you can do whatever you want to do, whether, you, whether you're my friend, whether you're my child, whether you're my partner, whether we're not going to say no until the world proves it to us, and we're going to try to find a way. But So my point is, here he was a real high-level baseball player being recruited to play baseball and uh, made a decision that he wanted to play college basketball. And, and so my point of this is, he, and I wonder where he got that idea. I don't know. I do not know. He, um, so he's playing travel baseball, and you go around and you see these incredible, incredible events and all these people. And, and then um, so you, ultimately every sport is a melting pot. If you're good enough, you make it to the regionals and then national championships. Typically used to be held in all of them were held in Orlando at Disney World. is the one facility big enough to have all this. So anyway, so so – We've got this AAU basketball program that was Mickey Mouse locally, and we watched the Diamond Devils baseball, John Rhodes in Mount Pleasant. I literally sat him down and copied his model and said, how are you getting 163 kids from the area Division I scholarships when there's no way Charleston has more baseball athletes than basketball, but basketball, we've only had nine in the last 10 years. And so he said, Richard, it's pretty easy. He said, high school coaches do not like travel sports, summer sports, AAU, YBOA, whatever you want to call it. They don't like it because they, they, they don't want their kids getting in bad habits, not learning teamwork, everything. Basically, the whole summer rips away what we told them we have to start over. And he said, what we decided was our program, real high school coaches that really played in college because is ultimately – isn't that for this level, if you're trying to get a college scholarship, wouldn't you want to hear it from someone who's actually lived Absolutely. what you're trying to live, right? Yeah. So, and that's so, going to take you to the next level. Correct. Through, through college. Yes. Ultimately, is so, potentially the goal, right? Th well, that's exactly. So, so we have a little basketball program called TMP, and it's short for Trademark Properties. Yes. I, I've seen and, the logo yeah. at Citadel. And, and so oh. a lot of people that might, yeah, that might, you know, follow me on social media, even though I don't try to get a follow probably think I coach basketball and nothing else. That's all I do. But the reality is I don't even coach anymore because the, part of the rules in that program was no dads in a dugout. Yeah. And so when we followed those rules and we copied it, we went from nine kids in 10 years playing college basketball, and, and honestly probably about four of them had a scholarship, to the last 10 years we've had 93 kids from the same area that is awesome. go and play college basketball, right? Now think about that. In, in, in basketball, you have five people start, start, right? Right. And so usually your scholarship player is the, the best player of those five, right? So we got 9.3 kids out of 12 kids on the team have moved on to play college basketball. Now our goal is to get it to 12 out of 12, and we're getting there. I think this last year's wave, we had 110 Division One scholarship offers for our 17U team last summer, right? Now, some of those kids were 16 and are with us again this summer. So anyway, my point is we're, we're traveling around. It's a crazy. I call it a two percenter. So right. So let's say let's say if your daughter plays lacrosse, two percent of the, no, the people. The L word is a, is a dirty word in my family. Right. Right. Yeah. So we so, don't play lacrosse. OK. So so <laughs> so so whatever very, that niche, very, right, yeah, whatever very. that two percent niche is. You live with those people on the weekends. Your neighbors don't really know what that 2% is, why they don't see you in the summer. It could be swimming. My, my best friend, Danny Cassis, yeah. his, his, his kids are swimmers, and he spins. So he's at the swimming events. Yeah. I'm at the basketball events. I'm at the baseball events for my, my oldest son. And, then, and so now you look up, and you're like, wow, we're in this little niche economy 
that we, we go to these places, we're in the middle of these facilities that are, that are spread out, high schools, churches, you're driving all over, and oh, by the way, you're eating carnival food, call it what you want, right? right? And so you're, you're, you're telling these kids that we want you to have a better life, want you, and oh, by the way, here's a hot dog. Yeah. So, so a corn dog I, right? some I, french fries. Yeah, so I watched it for like five or six years, and all of a sudden, my epiphany moment, this really does tie back to the, your question about the mall, is we were in Augusta, and we had one team in Aiken, one team in Augusta, one team. We do three teams. It's just to get scholarships, plain and simple, 15, 16, 17. College coaches don't want to see you any younger than that. I don't care if you're the best eight-year-old on the planet. Come see us when you're 15 because they don't want to see you. Makes and, sense. Right? Thank so, you for some sanity check there. Right? So, so um, go have fun. Until you're 15, go have right. fun. And then the ones who want to go to college, that's where we want to see you. All right? So, so, again, it's a niche. You're going around. These are kids that want to play scholarship basketball. And, um, and you know what? We don't – our market, we don't if, – if, if we got to find you, it's probably the wrong message. So, so the kids know how to find us. People always yeah. – Parents are always like, well, you didn't advertise. Well, you're right, because if a kid wants it bad enough, he'll find it, right? Right. So, so anyway, we're That's in Augusta. That's a good message to take away. Right? So we're in Augusta, and we got teams that are all spread out. And we finish out, and um, one of the moms tried to grab her, her, her child. Team just won by a bunch. Everyone's happy. She's like, I'm going to take my kid to eat. And the coach said, ma'am, you know, I know it's your first year with us, but we don't do that. They get on the bus, and we train them to be like college level athletes at 14, 15 years old, they're gonna ride with their team. Now you can come, you can get in your car and follow us, but they were gonna be with the team all weekend. And um, and so, and she goes, well, where are you going? And he's like, well, going to this mall, it's 22 miles away. And she said, well, Chick-fil-A is right across the street. And she couldn't, Yeah. right? And so again, 22 miles later, we're yeah. in this mall, we walk in this dead mall in the middle, in the outskirts of Augusta, right? And Right. And it's packed. There's 2,000 kids in there. It's loud. And and so we get up to Chick-fil-A, ironically, and the lady, I hear her the in whole the time. Mall. Yes. The okay. lady's the whole time saying, why couldn't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. Why do we have to drive 22 months? We could have just got it right across the street. We'd be back for the next game. And then. Um, Is there a no moms in the in the dugout oh, pool, too? Oh, absolutely. Lord it, have it was mercy her first day. on my soul. I laugh at her all the time. Woo. It was her first day. She didn't know. So we go up, and, and we get to the counter. I asked the, the girl. I said, I said, let me ask something. Is it like this? Chick-fil-A is amazing. That was the longest time we've ever had to wait. But I see how many people are here. Is it like this all the time? And she said, I've been working here eight months, and I've never seen more than 10 people in this food court ever. This place is dead. But I heard about these travel sports weekends that are crazy, and we had to beef up staff. And, and, and so I started looking around and realized everybody at this mall is playing in the tournament the we're playing team. in 22 miles away. And they all, they all traveled there. And so the light bulb went off. I said, I'm going to buy the Citadel Mall. That was 2010. So I said, build it, and they will come. You got it. We're going to go to break, and then I want to hear more about the building of it and further about evolution. You got We've it. We've got so much to talk about. Richard, thank you, you so it. much for being Thanks here. For Perfect Day me. Podcast, live at Dig South. A perfect day is far from being about perfection. At the root of a perfect day is gratitude, even for life's mistakes. You've got the book, now get the tools. Join me for this exclusive webinar where I will teach you how to create more perfect days in your life. Welcome back to Perfect Day Podcast, live here. Koki Barini with Richard Davis of Trademark Properties. We are talking four-letter nasty words. Yes. The nasty word mall. Yes. Which I completely concur. We're talking malls, basketball, children, evolution, and technology. Yes. So, Richard, I love the story of, of evolution. And, you know, I have to um, throw in a little background. We really not initially connected, but I remember back in, it was about 2009 or 2010, I was growing a wealth management practice because I, too, was evolving. I, I felt like I needed to leave big brokerage. Yes. I couldn't do it anymore. So I left big brokerage, started my own practice, really had to restart, um, start over. By the way, that was a beautiful building. 
Oh, I, I, I'm still there. Oh, you're still yeah, there? Yeah, I'm still love there. It, love I love it. it. Catches I, my eye every time I go back. I, I love it. Yeah. I love it. That was that was quick to act. Yeah. I saw that building in the rough, and so, yeah, I, that coming from you says a lot, so I thank you. Um, so back in the day, I, I, I asked you to come and speak to my clients because yes. it was really sexy. You, um, you and your wife, Ginger, um, you created uh, Flip This House, and you and Ginger were so awesome to come, and we hosted a little cocktail hour and, and you talked to our clients about Flip This House. It's when real estate was super hot and I was trying to big that, bring that concept to my wealth management clients because we folded that into my practice. So I was emerging. I was emerging from stodgy, big brokerage into you know, full comprehensive wealth management where we also offered you know, real estate ideas and, and private placements, um, which we successfully executed. That's been a lot of fun. Congratulations. Thank you, thanks. And, um, and now I've evolved into this perfect day piece. You know, I still have the asset management business, but a lot of people have that question in their mind of like, well, Koki, what are you doing? And I'm still doing the same thing, but you know, my evolution has been, I've spent the last 22 years of focusing and, and counseling my entrepreneur clients as to how to, when they get a couple nickels to rub together, how to put that aside and save for retirement. But it's unfortunate, but I've, I've woken up and seen, seen too many, you know, death, divorce, disability, rehab, you name it. And let me tell you what, financial planners are, are not planning for these things. That's right. They're planning for retirement. That's and, right. and the retirement's not even guaranteed. Yep. Um, so I didn't mean to get on my own soapbox, but my evolution has been, um, I'm, I'm still doing what I've always done. It's just, I expect the next 22 years of my practice of getting people to live more today. Yes. Um, more perfect days today, as opposed to that perfect day at that silly number of say 65 or whatever, you know, re retirement is my dirty, how many letters is retirement? Five or six? That's my dirty word yes. this day and age. Yes. So, and I know you're going to be doing this for the rest of your life because you're so passionate about what Absolutely. you do, what you do. And all of that intro to say how much you've evolved from flip this house into residential property to commercial property Correct. to development into that brings us right back to Citadel Mall. And how yeah. exciting is this? When I heard about this project, I said I have to have you on the show. I don't think I've laid eyes on you since maybe 2010, and That's I think it's because right. you've been cruising around the mall in a Segway yes. since then. <laughs> Paul, I've been Paul Blartnett, it exactly. I'm, <laughs> I'm protected. No, it, so I, I, I can tell you that's a perfect segue. Yeah, <laughs> the segue for the Pun segue. Intended, yes. Yeah, well um, done. That, that, you know, so Flip This House, you know, um, I, I, as you know, I created that show. I didn't try out for a TV show. It was an industry I'd never been done before, right? And so I did it. I made it. We, we, Reality TV pioneer. Yeah, we filmed it ourselves, and we did it in Greenville so no one could scoop us here. We went and hired um, off-work charter TV guys. Like, people who hate me are people that go to school to make TV <laughs> and have been <laughs> doing it for 25 years and never got a show on. Yeah. And I went and I said, I'm going to film what I really do. And this is back to tying into your perfect day. I always say, you know, if, if, if you do what you're passionate about, it shows, you'll get it on, mm -hmm. right? And, 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 you'll, you'll, and it, you'll like what you do. And so, so How bad does reality TV suck now? Oh, man. I mean, you yeah. were a total nope, pioneer nope, and nope. early to the party. Yes. And now you're early to the party yep. on this whole mall concept. Yes. And, and so, so, so... Bring us there. Yeah. So, so what happened with that when we first came out with that, I've learned, you know, it took me a couple of years to figure out that we were literally the only unscripted show in the history of television because they would send producers down. Remember, I filmed my own pilot. Yeah. And, and so you just sit next to me, throw the camera up, no scripts. You know me. I'm a no script guy. And so it worked have great. Have you seen my 411? You have. Yes, you I have. have. I have. Talk about unscripted. Really good. It's really good. Yes. <laughs> and so, so we went into it and just show what we really did. And, and, and the thing is, always, so... I was asked to speak to some, here's what's crazy, from James Allen, right? Go to Clemson, and I'll tell you that story in a second, but, but, but I, I go and sometimes people ask me to speak, and typically it's something that has nothing to do with what I do, right? They want to know about what I don't, what I say, so how do you make a TV show, how do you create it? Well, what you learn is most people are taught in school how to reverse engineer what the original thinker did, right? Right. So if you're an original thinker, you back into it. If yeah. you're left-handed, yeah. you go to Montessori school, you're taught that, you know, so you don't let the world tell you what to do. And so I, I respect anyone that goes to school to learn to reverse engineer and wants to copy. Right. And believe me, 
flipped his house. There's 47,000 shows out there copying it. And I feel very grateful that they liked it so much they copied it and try to want it. That's great. But, but my point is it, it was an industry that didn't exist, right? Yeah. And so, so we did that show, right? And then I'll, I'll be asked to go to law schools now because I had, so I created my baby, right? You, you have children. Yes. Your baby. So what if someone walked up to you, Koki, and said, man, we love your kid. We love your kid so much, we're going to take her. We decided we birthed her. And so that really was what happened. And you'll never see a quote from me about it. I never, I never went down in the dirt. I just said no comment. But they, they stole my baby. Yeah. And so to me, it was never a financial mm-hmm. dispute. It was 100% you stole my baby. So my point is, so now you go to law school, and they want... They, they want me to speak to how I won that law case. And pretty simple. It, it, I birthed the baby. Everything yeah. else is fluff, right? You can take it, but yeah, I it's created. mine. That's right. Yeah. Right, right. So 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 anyway. Well, kudos for that. But, I mean. the, but the segue on the tech in the mall is what they did know and didn't have the basis of the TV show and also it was we had a software that we created. We had a platform on how to find these assets. And so what you, sh- what you saw me doing, we were looking at 2,200, 2,500 houses every single month all around the state. When the show started out, you saw us in a helicopter. Mm-hmm. We, we weren't in a helicopter because we wanted to be. We were in because we had to be because we were so stretched out, covering 46 counties every single week, every single month. And, you know, our team, it, it just wore us out, right? And so it was fun at the time. It was a great little run. But, but you were early now, to the party. Yeah, very early And you were early to the exit, you which got is it. great. But the and technology. And I think you're early to the party on yes. the mall and, that's and what, what you're doing there. You got it. And our technology has always been find this stuff. It sounds like cliche. One man's trash is another man's treasure, right? Well, we, we so most people don't remember this, but would you say right now that Upper King Street is fairly hot? Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. So, so I bought the Amar building. From yeah. a bank in Florida in 1994, and every expert in this town, and everyone that was my family thought I was crazy. Said, don't do it. Said, don't do it. You don't go on that side of Calhoun Street. Yeah. All right? So I bought it for, and I, you know, I don't ever talk about money. I, I just talk about success. We yeah. bought it. We fixed it up. We sold it. We held on to it 13 years later, right? And so this software that we had, ironic, ironic, ironic being here at Dig South, is we've held on to that software. We had a moment that in this building... Right over here, I spoke to 4,000. It was actually almost 5,000 people. Rusty was the fire chief at the time. He had to make sure that we're not from South Carolina. They all wanted to come in, and they all wanted to write me a check to make them rich. Does that make sense? Right. In other words, sure. they wanted They, they wanted, wanted to know your software. Well, they, yeah. And, yeah. So, and, and so the problem is we were, we, were, we were all right with doing that. But I chickened out. So my aha moment uh-huh. is be careful what you ask for because you'll get it. Uh-huh. You better make sure you want it. So I look up and there's 5,000 people want to wear my logo all around. I realized, I went home and said, man, I don't want to have 5,000 people at my beck and call. I like to chase deals. I like to do deals. Right. Right? So you. So my point is it's like I had to make a decision. Do you want to... Do you want to do deals or do you want to tell other people how to do deals on a mass level and, and basically become a marketing company, right? Yeah, and I so, think that's really good advice. And, and I talk in Perfect Day about your Eunice and about how, you know, I mean, and, and you've said the word, or you didn't say the word, but for me, what I heard was clarity. Yes. Being yes. clear on what you really want. Yes. And what you didn't want was 5,000 people running around. You wanted to do deals. You got it. Yeah. And, and, and anyone with a spreadsheet showed me all these millions. Yeah. And, and I'm like, no, I'm not interested in that. I'm not going to do it. So my point is that same genesis, that same, that, 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 little, that little business that we created, software that we were about to share with the world, we decided not to. And that same software, I got, we own a hotel in Greenville that we bought in 2003 from that. We bought the Amar Bill in 1994. And now we bought the mall, right, which, which we sourced in 2010 and it took us till 2017 to actually own it. But, but, but my point is... That's what I do. We source deals. So I'm there every single day. I love that deal. And if I would have missed out on that deal because I'm making money selling a piece of software, right? that's, that's not for me. That's right? somebody else's. That's someone else's dream. Unique right? ability. Yep. Somebody, yeah. So, so way so, to stay in your sweet spot. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so what we like is, and you know, I like to take something that someone else forgot. And so sometimes you see, and I challenge everybody on your way home today, right? 
you'll ride by and you'll see something, and sometimes it's trash on the side of the road. You say someone should do something about it. And then sometimes it's the house right down the street and the grass hasn't been cut in three months. You go, somebody should do something about it. Well, that's what I do. I'm the guy that does something I, about I it. I have that eye. I get it. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That resonates with me. Absolutely. So that mall, think about it. So this segues back to what we started with malls. So malls have been going down, going down, going down. Then I'm at these sporting events, and I'm seeing foot traffic going up and up and up. In the middle of these beat-down warehouses it, where, where there's no food, there's right. no hotels, whatever. So my point is that my aha moment with that was I need to combine the both of these. So I bought this property. I and bought horrible it. horrible convention centers. Yes, right? And the, it, you know, you don't even have enough people to fill them. Nope. And they're not even putting food sources. It's just, got it. It's, the, the travel on the road circuit with our kids has yes. been less... Less than gratifying. And, and so, unfortunately, so, so so we are what the number one, according to every magazine out there, every TV, we're number one traveled city in the country, right? Yes. Okay, so Charleston. So you're coming to Charleston, and I don't need to add more people coming to the peninsula, but but you're now you travel sports. You're going to Spartanburg. You're going to Greeleyville. You're going to Boise, Idaho. You're going to a bunch of different places, but. I always heard from coaches, why don't y'all do something in Charleston? And so the, so when we announced that we're building this world-class all-sport travel sports facility, it, the, the, it's unbelievable. Matter of fact, to the point that if you come in there, Flip Gym has moved in in anticipation of our event space. They moved in. If you go in there today, you're going to see between 4 and 6 o'clock, I don't know how many they have in their program. I think it's 850. It's crazy. I, it, I would do anything to have a – a facility to walk around and get my my life done while my kid is you got it <laughs> practicing. and so we don't have to be in a car yeah. and add in traffic running Correct. over to Burger King running over so and so Correct. so to me we bought it we felt like it's um, you'll see I shared a little bit of plans with you but yeah. we're basically building a district and we're building a district you're gonna see verticality you're gonna see density you're gonna see green space you're gonna see I feel like a kid in the candy store that that I got to see a few yeah. pictures yeah I appreciate you and, and sharing the, with that and I love that you're in I would well, don't want to say partnership but that MUSC is a big part of it I I yes you know they, every part of a perfect day for me involves contribution yes. and um, you know I, I um, more than more than uh, financially I just I love I serve on a, on a board for MUSC and have for some time and just love supporting that organization. How lucky are we to have them in our backyard? Oh, it's so unbelievable. And they, they were literally the first people we went to and said, look, I love that. big vision. Think about this. You guys, the peninsula is locked up. Your parking garages are tough. You know, people, the a population is aging. So just think, think okay. about this. You got, you got 30 acres of parking sitting there, right? Instead of you building a new building over here, what if we were to put you over here? And it took a little time. And like someone told me, Richard, you turned the Titanic around in five months. That took us 12 years to build. And, um, and, and congratulations. Because awesome. it makes sense for yeah. the community. It makes sense for MUSC. They got now, you know, there's 250 people to park out in front. So basically, again, repurpose, mm -hmm. reuse. Remember the old commercials, recycle. I mean, yeah. it's not brain surgery. It's like, why are we trying to build something new? Why are we trying to tear down everything that used to be? So why don't we repurpose? So that's that's what we're doing. And I so love the, it. the four-letter word to me is dirt, sticks, and bricks that we're going to reassemble. You don't need to tear it down. Right. There's 911 people employed there. So if you like it or don't like it, if you tear it down, 911 people are looking for jobs. We're not doing that. We're gonna we're gonna go. We're gonna repurpose it. You, if you come in there right now, you'll see a couple things we've done. We'll drop our plans to the city here in the next six eight weeks, and and I think people will be blown away. Uh, uh, at our vision. I, of what I we're can't wait. To do. I can't wait to see this continue. I am so thrilled that our paths reconnected because I saw you did. You're up early because you were yes. on 5:30. Yes. Uh, 411 Live. Yes. yes. So for those of you who don't know what 411 Live is, is your framework, your tool to make every day a perfect day. I want to put you on the spot as we close here today. Is there something recurring or, okay, so let me frame it this way. How about this, Richard? We're sitting here on April the 26th, 2019. What has happened that you're wildly excited about? And what does that mean has to be on your 411 list for tomorrow? So I'm going to advance past tomorrow. Let me tell you where my perfect day is going to be. Okay. So it makes no sense. It's just a hood ornament, but I'm I stuck a basketball court 
in the middle of the mall, okay? Right. So my perfect day is in two weeks when my son, who plays at Clemson that only gets two or three weeks off, he comes home, his, his younger brother plays at James Island High School. They get up at five in the morning, they work out, right? They get to spend those two couple weeks. So I love that they're right. together. Well, now they're going to come to the mall and dad's going to, dad's going to be up at five in the morning shooting free throws or really anymore. My game's over rebounding for my sons. Nice. And then my oldest son will come over before he goes to law school and their little sister will come over before she gets. So yeah, my perfect day is having all them around one place, one time, because as you know, it's fleeting. It, it you know, they're all going to go their own separate ways. So now to just have that one little, that is going to be my perfect day, which hopefully will lead into the that, perfect couple of weeks, right? That sounds beautiful. And I love that your perfect day involves family. And, um, you know, I have to share this. It takes work. And um, it's clear you've developed this relationship with your kids because it's all too often, unfortunately, that our kids get neglected and get our leftovers yes. in the course of hello, converting a mall to an epic, you know, mixed use yes. facility involving the city and MUSC. I like that word. Can so, I can I steal that word? Epic. Epic. Um, you might have to get permission from me. Okay. Yeah. Right, okay. But I let me just say I, I think maybe you should use the word epic. Okay. Excellent. And so it takes work. And so for a perfect day, you can't just wake up and say, I want to be with my kids on a perfect day. Because you know what? Your kids may hate your guts. Yes. Yes. And so it takes work. And so I just want to leave you with that to say you've done an amazing job. Thank you. Um, I've really, it's been a pleasure to know you and Ginger and to hear the story and of you and the your way, kids. And by the way, I can't let you close out without talking about Ginger because you know I wouldn't be where I'm at without her because... Right she now, made this happen, didn't she? Come on, she? everyone Everyone that saw the TV show knows who the brains, and, you know, I'm the beautiful face, and she's the brains. We know that. You and, know. And, and part of 411 is also being smart and, and building up your spouses. So yes. well yes. done, thank touche. You. Thank you. And so with that, Richard, thank you so much for joining us here at Dig South on Perfect Day Podcast. I'm really excited to hear more about Citadel Mall and see how that e evolves. So until next time, make it a perfect day. Yeah.